How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be explaining recursion. Now I think recursion is one of those things where it doesn't make sense for such a long time but then once you finally have that click moment, everything is much clearer and it almost seems obvious by the time you actually understand how it truly works. So I'm hoping that this video is going to give you that click moment and you can take advantage of recursion in your next project or help you with your next job interview. Okay, now I am going to be using uh, JavaScript for this video, but uh, this logic and these topics are going to apply to practically any other programming language such as Python, Java, C, whatever it might be. And the task at hand is going to be to reverse a string. For example, if you say reverse string apple, okay, so take the apple string and reverse it, it's going to produce E L double P A, of course, the reversed version of that apple string. Okay, so also worth mentioning that I'm going to be taking a slightly different approach to uh, this explanation. I'm going to be showing you the function first. So let's do that right now. So I'll copy this and paste it right here. This right here is the function. So I've showed you the function. We're then going to be dissecting it and taking uh, you know, we're going to be I'm, I'm going to be showing you the, the call stack. I'm going to be showing you exactly uh, what happens as each function gets called to give us the eventual result, okay? And that's opposed to uh, showing you how to write the function from start to finish. Like I said, we're showing you first and then we're going to dissect it and explain what actually happens when you call this function. So let's get right into it now by firstly verifying that the function actually works. So I'm going to say here console.log, I'm going to say reverse string and then pass through here apple, okay? So what's the output of the recursive reverse string function? Well, let's try it out, node index.js and we get ELPPA, the expected result. Now before jumping into uh, this function, I want to quickly explain the slice method in JavaScript for those of you who don't know how it works. Um, so I'm just going to call the slice method on uh, the decode string. So I'll say decode.slice and basically this method is going to take in an index or multiple indexes, but let's first have a look at a single index being passed in. So if I say slice one, this is going to take the character at index one and return the rest of the string alongside it. So we have the decode string, we have index zero being D, index one being C, so we're going to stop there and grab the rest of the string and return it. So for example, if I save this and run the script again, we get code uh, as the output. So index one, take that and return the rest of the string. You can also provide a second argument. This is going to be the end of the slice. For example, we can say slice three. So now it's going to say, okay, D is zero, C is one, O is two, D is three. So stop there. Okay. Let's save this, go back and run the script again. And we get C O. As you can see, the second index you pass in, so three, is not inclusive. So D is the third index, but it doesn't count D when slicing. So we only get C and O. Okay. Also worth mentioning that uh, you can say, for example, negative one, it's going to start at the end of the string and grab that one. So save this and run the script again, we get E. So basically, slice negative one takes the last character of the string. Okay, that's out of the way. Now let's have a look at the recursive function. Okay, fantastic. So you call the reverse string function, you pass your string in, what does it actually do? Well, firstly, it checks, is the string length less than or equal to one? In the case of Apple, this here is gonna give us false. Therefore, we jump down to the second line. So. Just to clarify, we're saying reverse string apple, and this is what's happening when this function gets called. So drop down to the second line. This right here is going to take the last character of 
the string, so Apple, and it's going to keep it there within memory as the function is being called. So take the last character, okay? The function is still executing, right? Get the last character, then say plus reverse string. So call the function again, but this time it's going to take in the string minus the last character, okay? Because a slice of zero takes the first index and it says, get me everything up until the last index. So a P P L. Okay. Just to verify this guys, I'm going to say apple dot slice zero and negative one. And let me just console log what this is so we can just see here. So console log just the apple slice of negative one there. A P P L. Uh, sorry. A P P L. So E plus a p p l okay that's what the function does ultimately right this function really just takes the last character of the string so that's important to remember really to keep it simple this function just takes the last character of the string that's really what it's doing okay that might make more sense at the end of this video, but just keep that in mind, okay? All it does extra is it just says, okay, cool. Once I've got the last character of the string, get me the last character of the next string. And that's when it calls reverse string again and passes in everything but the last character. That's what it does. Now, I wanna explain this even further and I wanna actually show you what the uh, what it looks like as it's being called. So the actual call stack for this reverse string function. So what happens? Okay, we say reverse string and we pass in Apple. Now, this is a function call, right? Just a visual representation of it. We know this function gives us what? We just covered it, yeah? So this function equals, I'm just, I, I'm using equals and this greater than sign to uh, signify what it returns. So this function returns E, as we've seen here, E, plus calls it again, okay? So it goes E plus reverse string, this time passing in APPL, okay? Now, let's dive deeper, okay? Let's pretend up here doesn't exist for a second, right? And we're just focusing on what this does. Reverse string A double P L. This does what? Well, it returns the last character, so L, plus, right? So back here again, plus reverse string, this time everything but the last character, okay? Then we're also gonna forget everything here. So forget that part. All right, everything highlighted. Hop down again. What does this do? Well, it does P plus reverse string of AP only. Let's do it again. Hop down here. This reverse string for AP gives you uh, P and then plus. Then, of course, again, reverse string and then A. Hop down here again. What does this one do now? This one gives you, as we know, the last character in the string. So it gives you A, but hold on. That right there doesn't do the plus bit. So I did act so I did act so I did accidentally mention gives you the last character. That was a mistake. What I meant to say was it actually goes through this condition here. Let's just sort of uh, step back for a sec there and just start again with this last call. My mistake. So reverse string for, a, for the character of A comes in here. Is the string length less than or equal to one? In this case, it is true. A is less than or equal to one. Therefore, it just returns A. So this call is different to the others in that it doesn't hop down here 
and it actually ends up within here because of course the length is less than or equal to one. Okay, so this is what it looks like when the function gets called for reverse string apple. These are all your calls. Keep in mind that as we reach down here, right, we're at this last point, this reverse string function is still active. So we're still within this first call, right? So everything here, you know, all this here, everything here still happens, right? All this stuff is part of this initial call. So when I said earlier that this E is still in memory, this just means that we're still waiting, right? So it's saying E plus and all this stuff is still happening, you know, for that first initial call. So everything's still active, right? Fantastic. So now we have this call stack. Let's now bring it back to get our result. You can kind of see the result here, E, L, P, B, but let me just quickly go over, you know, the reversing of that. So let's start from the bottom within here and just take us back up um, to the, to, uh, you know, to the start. So reverse string for A gives us A, right? So let's go here, get rid of that. And we say, okay, cool. P plus and then A. That's what the output was for that call. Output of this was simply just A. Therefore, we go back and we just say P plus A. Then this reverse string happens. The output of this is P plus A, of course, being P A. Then this function gets called, you know, in reverse order, right? When this function got called, it goes, okay, P plus P P A or P plus P A, giving us P P A. When this function got called, it gave us L plus P P A. So get rid of this, L P P A. When the first function got called, the first call, it gives us E plus L P P A, of course, giving us there simply just E L P P A. And that's how we end up with the uh, with the return result. So I hope that there makes sense. I hope you know uh, by going through the actual call stack of the um, of the function call, uh, you're able to sort of understand you know what each output was of the recursive function. And I also hope that um, if I just go back to the expanded view. What I said earlier, you know, when I mentioned that the important thing about this function is all it really does is just get the last character, right? I hope that sort of makes sense now because you have your your main calculation, whatever you're doing, but then you, you have some sort of plus or some sort of appending or, or something like that, that, you know, you just call the function again, but this main task is simply just taking the last value. And I guess it sort of explains more like a step-by-step -step of what's actually happening. So in order to reverse a string, you need to get the last character of, you know, each part, but then you sort of reverse, if that makes sense, it pushes to the start. So I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, I've been talking quite a bit. Um, if it doesn't make sense, uh, just, yeah, maybe watch this part again with the uh, breakdown of the, uh, of the call stack there. But before I sort of, um, before I in this video, it's obviously worth mentioning the base condition. So I haven't mentioned this much in this video. Um, the base condition is essentially the thing that stops the recursion. So this second part is the, I guess, the recursive part because you call the function again. And if you don't have this base condition, then the function can go on forever. And I guess it sort of makes sense in this case as well, because when you reach the last call for A, right, you're out of string. Okay, you're, you're, you're at the last character. So there's no need and it doesn't make sense to then try and reverse the string again because, well, you're at the last character. So, yeah, you, every recursive function needs a base condition to stop the recursion. So... Essentially, whenever this condition gets satisfied, that is when your nested call stack stops. Then once you reach that part, everything tumbles back like this and it tumbles back into 
your output. You basically start here, it goes bang, 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 up to the top, then it goes dun, 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 back to the bottom. And that's sort of how they work. So, hope this video uh, helped you guys out. If it did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.